All right, YouTube. In the past, we've taken a look at projectile motion using the kinematics, but today I want to show you kind of a slick way to apply the conservation of energy to projectile motion. So back today is our little Lego dude with a cannon, and this cannon's going to fire a projectile at 50 meters per second out of the end of the cannon at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal axis. Now the first thing I want to solve for is the maximum height which the projectile is going to reach above the point from which it was fired. And rather than using the kinematic equations, we're going to use the conservation of mechanical energy. You see, the conservation of energy says that in any situation, the initial mechanical energy of a system plus the non-conservative work done on that system is equal to the final mechanical energy of that system. And if you want to see that derived and explained, just click up here. Now the term that people are probably the least familiar with is this non-conservative work term. But don't worry, because anytime we have projectile motion, there is no non-conservative work being done. See, non-conservative work is work done by things like friction or rocket engines or motors. The only thing that's acting on a projectile, what's in projectile motion, is gravity, which is what we call a conservative force. It does no non-conservative work. Remember, gravity just turns potential into kinetic energy. Ultimately meaning that in a projectile motion problem, our initial mechanical energy is going to equal the final mechanical energy. So to solve for the maximum height, the first thing we're going to need to do is figure out just how fast our projectile is going to be moving right here when it reaches its position of maximum height. Now we're not going to be using the conservation of energy right out of the gate to solve for this velocity at maximum height. That'll come into play later. So to solve for the velocity at the maximum height, we need to remember that projectile motion is nothing other than constant velocity in the x-axis and freefall in the y-axis. So finding the horizontal component of this 50 meters per second, we find the velocity at the maximum height is 43.3 meters per second. And now that we know this velocity, we can turn to the conservation of energy to solve for this maximum height. You see, the projectile, when it comes out of the cannon, has some initial mechanical energy. It's given by its kinetic plus potential energies. Now the kinetic energy is going to be one half times the projectile's mass, which we don't know. I'm just going to call it MP for mass of a projectile, multiplied by its velocity, which is initially 50. Now the 50 meters per second can be in any direction. We really don't care what direction this projectile is initially fired in because kinetic energy is what we call a scalar. The direction does not matter. So there's no need to pull this 30 into it. So we've got one half mv squared for kinetic, plus our initial potential term. Well, let's just go ahead and say that the initial height of this projectile is a height of zero, meaning the initial gravitational potential is gonna be the mass of the projectile times g, that's 9.8, times the initial height, that's zero, which makes that whole term zero. Now we're gonna set that equal to the final kinetic energy, that's gonna be one half times the mass of our projectile times its velocity at the point in time we're concerned with, in this case at the maximum height, that's 43.3 squared, plus the final potential term, that's gonna be MP times 9.8, that's G, times the height that we're trying to solve for. I'm gonna call that H max. Now the first thing you'll notice is we have a mass of the projectile in every term, so we can actually cancel that out. And we find the projectile goes 31.9 meters above the cannon. And the conservation of mechanical energy in projectile motion doesn't just stop at finding the maximum height. Let's say we're given that this cannon was fired off a 40 meter tall cliff, and we wanted to solve for the speed of the projectile when it lands we're still gonna be able to apply the conservation of mechanical energy. So the initial mechanical energy is gonna equal the final mechanical energy. Now in this case, because the projectile is finishing 40 meters below where it started, we're gonna say the final height of the projectile is negative. And solving for the final velocity, we find the cannonball is gonna be traveling 57.3 meters per second when it lands. So ultimately we can apply the conservation of mechanical energy to projectile motion anytime we're either given a velocity and want to solve for height or we're given a height and want to solve for velocity. So I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.